spite of spinning daydreams. I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud. We're in the green room at the Rose Theater, and tonight on Studio B, I have Sophie Millman with me. Yeah. After the show, it was a yeah. great, great show. Thank you very much. So tell me about tonight, what was happening? It was being recorded live? For... Being recorded live for the CBC. Um, it was the first time we debuted certain songs that are going to be featured on the next record. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of May, it's called Take, Take Love Easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so a new band, too, so... Yeah. Um, a drummer we haven't played with in a while, and uh, I took brand new saxophone player. Mm -hmm. So a lot of firsts, and a lot of kind of elements uh, that are not necessarily set in stone, but I think yeah. it worked out well. The audience was fantastic. The the room is gorgeous. It's mm -hmm. it's so nice to play a beautiful theater, and I have I have to say Canada has a lot of them, but yeah. this one is this one's special. Oh good. Yeah. Glad you. Yeah. It's beautiful lot. too. It doesn't always yeah. sound good. Looks good too. Yeah, a lot of people say that about the Rose. They mm -hmm. really love playing her. So it's a good, great thing for Brampton. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So now I know you have moved a lot in your life. You know, you moved from Russia to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, what was the significance to you of actually moving to both those places? Um, it was not really decision a decision that was driven by me my parents kind right. of dragged me around um, but it was all you know a, a, an attempt on their part to find a better life a better situation for them and especially the kids because um, we moved from Russia to Israel it was just the three of us my parents and I and uh, just you know as soon as the the wall came down mm -hmm. and people were allowed to leave my parents were one of the first out because you know, mm -hmm. they were just tired of the system wanted to connect with our Jewish heritage, which we weren't allowed to connect with for so many years. Mm -hmm. And then Israel to Canada is, you know, listen, mm -hmm. Canada is the safest place in the world really to live in. Yes. And um, my parents just got a little bit tired of the exciting polit political landscape. And it's been amazing to us. This country is just absolutely fantastic. And I urge all immigrants mm -hmm. to just embrace it learn the language and take advantage of the opportunities that it offers because god when i came here mm -hmm. i i spoke i spoke some english but that was pretty much it i mean canada really gave my family a leg up and you know we're mm -hmm. very well. i i think if you actually use the opportunities that you have here you really have a lot mm -hmm. you know a lot of support and I'm, absolutely i'm glad that you said that because i think a lot of people don't actually grow when they move to another country. Well, it's hard, yeah. They yeah. get a lot behind, they get nostalgic, and I definitely went through all those yeah. denial, anger, all those emotions. Yeah. But once you actually open your heart and open your mind, amazing things can happen. Now, when you moved to Israel, was it, uh, you only had a few things, but one of your most prized possessions was the record album? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was what your dad was yeah. heavily into? Into jazz, into just just Western music, not country and Western. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, North American, British, French stuff. And um, I just started listening to it and it became second nature to me. It's, it's what I love. Mm -hmm. And what do you miss most about those places? I think people I left behind and family. And uh, it's just my parents, my brother, and I in Canada. There's nobody else. Grandparents are in Russia, uncles and aunts are in Russia and Israel, cousins are. Mm -hmm. All over the place, and um, I think it's the people and the, and the memories. And mm -hmm. I always left at very pivotal times. Mm -hmm. I left Russia when I was seven, very kind of formative, yeah. and Israel when I was 16. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, you know not to take them anywhere at 16, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be tough. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of got that in the concert tonight, you know, that you have a lot of memories, you know, yeah. you miss the people. That must be really tough. Yeah. To know you can't go back. You can't go back and mm -hmm. you can't see them or you, some of the people who are still around, it's different. You know? Yeah. You only have, your memories are frozen in time. 
Yeah. People of all the involved. So, but it gives me something to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. D does it help you draw from a certain? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's why you know, it's it is a little bit melancholy. Even the the happiest song we we perform always have a little bit of an edge to them because you know even happiness is tempered with a little bit of sadness and vice versa. You know? Yeah. It's the, it's kind of the dance of life. Now, when did you actually know that you wanted to become a singer? Oh, when did I know? I don't, I don't think it was a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. I think I became a singer before I realized that I wanted to become a singer. I was discovered in a very kind of serendipitous, rapid way after a few sings, uh, after a few uh, shows mm -hmm. in, a, in a club, a record label walked in and they said, okay, we want to sign you. Yeah. And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then I just signed it because out of curiosity, yeah. more than a feeling that I can really handle this career. And then as I started touring and performing, it just sunk in. I really love it. And yeah. the audience response was amazing. And I just kind of went with it, and I'm so glad I did. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, you were saying that uh, you know, you'd know you like kids to understand um, something that you learned from your life. Can you share that again for the camera? Because I thought that, that was, you know. Well, I, I think I was talking about that before I sang uh, Being Green. And that song is all about just empowerment and taking control of your life and not being a conformer, somebody who conformed, like, not 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 um, following the, you know any sort of herd. Um, it's the saddest thing when I see kids compromising their own sense of self in order to fit in with whatever clique, whatever group. And yeah. you know, high school is so hard. Grade school, you know, all through all through school, there's such social pressure on kids. Yeah. I think what I've learned in my life is, yes, it's good to be nice and play nice with the other kids, mm -hmm. but it's also important to know who you are and to stay true to yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you do that, you know, good things happen. Yeah.